Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'll be filming a new what I eat in a day. So excited to share some new recipes with you guys that are perfect for the fall time. Just really nice and cozy, healthy, like feel good and nutritious meals. So I hope that you guys are going to find lots of good inspiration. So it's currently the morning. And as you guys have seen, I've had my warm water with lemon. I had my green juice, but now I'm ready for some breakfast. I'm going to be making some warm chia pudding with apple and cinnamon. I love apples in the fall time and this is a really nice way to incorporate them into your breakfast. So I'm just slicing up this one apple into smaller pieces and then I will also be topping the chia pudding with some fig. These are also in peak season right now so they're super delicious and of course just a great source of different vitamins and antioxidants. So this is all you need to make the warm chia pudding. So I'm starting out with one cup of plant milk. This is unsweetened oat milk, but you can also use almond milk or soy milk, whatever milk you like. So I'm just pouring that into a little pot and then I'm going to add three tablespoons of chia seeds and two tablespoons of ground flaxseed. And this is also a really quick way to make chia pudding if you haven't prepared it the night before, but you're really in the mood for it, you can make it warm on the stovetop. And once everything cooks together, it just makes this beautiful pudding consistency that is just like an overnight chia pudding. I'm also adding some cinnamon and cardamom because I love those spices with apples, especially in the fall time. And then of course, adding in the apple as well, but you can really do this with any kind of flavoring that you like. So you could do it with berries, even with pumpkin spice and chia seeds are such an incredible source of fiber they even contain two times the amount of fiber than oats they're also a great source of omega-3 fats potassium calcium iron and again all that fiber is just so great for your digestive system especially first thing in the morning once the pudding is done, just before I'm about to serve it, I add in one scoop of protein powder. This will add a little bit of extra protein to the pudding. And then I'm topping it with my fresh figs, some plant-based vanilla yogurt, and some walnuts. And this whole combination is so nice and delicious. It's warming, super filling, rich in fiber and different antioxidants, good healthy fats. And I just love that it's nice and warming, especially on these cold, chilly fall mornings. I'm all done with breakfast and now I'm having a little green tea. Cheers. I've really been into the chia puddings lately because they're nice and warm and you can really flavor it however you want. I also love to do it with berries, with pumpkin spice, a little pumpkin puree. You can also make it chocolate flavored. So it's just very versatile and it's so good for you. Incorporating a good amount of fiber in your diet can make the biggest difference to your overall health, of course, to your digestion, your gut health. And also it's been shown to improve blood sugar levels throughout the day. So it prevents you from having really big crashes, keeps you satisfied and feeling Feeling fuller for longer and also it can prevent those like sugary cravings I love a little sweet treat every day I think it's important to have that balance but if you're someone who feels like you're always craving sugar and really processed foods very often then increasing the amount of fiber in your diet with things like chia seeds vegetables beans whole grains that can really help to keep your blood sugar level stabilized throughout the day and just kind of gives you that internal calm and balance in your body also having a good amount of fiber in your diet is really important important for your gut health. It helps to feed the good bacteria in your gut. And a healthy gut is not only important for your digestion, but it also contributes to a healthy immune system, to brain health, heart health, improved mood, healthy sleep. In fact, 95% of your serotonin, which is that feel-good chemical in your body, 95% of that is produced by your gut bacteria. So it's so important to take care of your gut health, making sure that you're eating a wide variety of different foods, Foods, including lots of fiber rich foods along with that I think it's really important to take a high quality probiotic to give additional support to your gut and to help introduce a wider range of good bacteria in your gut and that's always like the key marker for good gut health the people who show a wider range and a better diversity of their gut bacteria those are the ones who experience better health better cardiovascular health stronger immune systems better digestion and so on my personal favorite 
and the one that I think is the most well-researched and effective probiotic is the Daily Symbiotic by Seed. This is actually a probiotic and a prebiotic. So probiotics are the good bacteria that are getting introduced into your gut and prebiotics are the food that those good bacteria eat. So you get both in one capsule and the main reason I love this and would highly recommend it is their delivery system. So this is delivered in a two-in-one via cap technology and that ensures that the good bacteria inside the second capsule can actually make it down to your gut because that is a huge problem with most probiotics because we have a lot of stomach acids, bile salts, and although those are really important for breaking down our food, they can also destroy the bacteria. So this two-in-one via cap technology prevents that from happening so the bacteria can actually make it down all the way to your gut so you know it's actually going to have a really powerful effect on your gut and I think this is why they are so popular is that people really feel the difference when they take this. So I take one of these on an empty stomach every morning and it's just part of my morning routine now. I do it after my warm water with lemon but before I have anything to eat, so before my green juice and breakfast. They're also delivered sustainably each month in these refill packs so you get this glass component. You also get this little mini travel vial which is really great for if you're going away for the weekend or on a trip and then each month you get the refills and you just refill your glass bottle so it's much more sustainable, creates less waste, and all the packaging they use as well is either from recycled materials, they are compostable or recyclable. So just through and through, they are a very thoughtful brand and their product is absolutely amazing. So if you guys want to try this out as well, they have offered all my viewers 15% off. There will be a link down below. Click on that and use code AnnieJ15 at checkout and you will get 15% off your first order. Would highly recommend checking them out if you haven't already. Later on for lunch, I made this really nice kind of fall harvest protein pasta salad. First, just roasting up some vegetables. This is sweet potato, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. I just cut these up into smaller pieces, toss them in some olive oil, and I'm gonna let those bake for about 30 minutes. As that is cooking, I'm going to prepare the pasta. I've been really into this chickpea pasta lately for some extra protein. That just needs to boil for about five to seven minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna prepare the maple vinaigrette. So I'm doing a few tablespoons of olive oil, some apple cider vinegar, maple syrup, a little Italian seasoning. As always, I'll make sure to have the exact recipe down below for you guys in the description box if you wanna recreate it. This dressing is perfect for fall and I've actually used this for lots of different things like a regular green salad. Then once everything is done cooking, I'm going to add everything into this large bowl. So I've got my pasta, my roasted vegetables. I'm also adding in half a cup of dried cranberries, a small red onion that I've diced up, and then about half a cup of pecans. Pour the salad dressing on top and give it a good mix. And you can see it makes a really nice big portion. So I actually just had half of this today and then I put the other half into a Tupperware for tomorrow. And then I've also been experimenting with a little bit of goat's cheese. You guys know I'm pretty sensitive to dairy, but I'm working on slowly bringing it back in and just seeing how it affects my body. And goat's cheese has actually been really great. I haven't noticed anything crazy with my skin. And I do like it occasionally, especially with a salad like this. I feel like it just complements all the flavors really nicely. And I just like broadening my range of foods and having less restriction around things. So yeah, this is a salad I've really been loving at the moment. This salad, you guys, is beyond. If fall was a salad, it would be this. <laughs> Lots of nice roasted vegetables. I love the pasta, cranberries and goat cheese and pecans. It's just, mm. and that maple vinaigrette dressing just really ties everything together. So if you guys want an amazing fall salad, I would highly recommend checking this out. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. One of my favorite things about fall is definitely the baking and all the fun like pumpkin spice things. I made a really delicious pumpkin spice bread in my latest What I Eat in a Day. I love a pumpkin spice smoothie, a pumpkin spice latte. I just think it's so much fun and it's so festive and it's just like nice and cozy to be baking at home when the weather gets colder. Today I want to try out this new recipe that I found that are pumpkin spice bars with this gorgeous looking cream cheese frosting on top that is made from cashews. This could be a nice little thing to have as a snack or of course as a dessert, which is what I'm gonna do today. I'm so excited. 
So I'm starting by making the icing. The recipe suggested that you start with this so that you can let it cool in the fridge for a bit. So to my blender, I'm adding in my soaked cashews, my coconut yogurt, a little squeeze of fresh lemon juice, some vanilla, maple syrup, and then I'm just blending all of that together. And then you should have this nice, thick, creamy frosting. So I'm gonna add that to a Tupperware and place that in the fridge to let it cool and set. Next, moving on to the filling, I'm combining some almond flour with baking soda, some pumpkin spice, cinnamon, and a dash of salt, and then I'm just mixing all of that together. And then I'm just gonna put that to the side, and in a separate bowl, I'm gonna combine our coconut sugar and melted coconut oil, give that a little mix. Then add in our pumpkin puree, one egg, Again, mix that up, and then I'm slowly going to add the dry mixture to this wet mixture. And then it should turn into this kind of doughy consistency, almost like a bread. And then you just wanna pour that into a baking pan with some parchment paper. So that is gonna go into the oven for about 20 minutes and I like to just use the timer on my phone just to keep an eye on that I don't leave it in for too long. So I'm setting that timer and then as I'm already in the kitchen, I decided to get dinner started early, which I actually love to do when I can. It doesn't happen every day, but it does make everything run a lot smoother in the evenings. So tonight we were both really in the mood for some chili. So I'm starting out with chopping up one onion. This is one large white onion and I'm already placing that into my pot and then separately I'm going to slice up the red bell pepper and a few cloves of garlic and I'm just gonna put that into a bowl on the side I'm gonna add that in a little bit later on So heading to the stove, I'm first going to fry up the onions for a few minutes in a little bit of olive oil. Then preparing my broth, I've got this cubed broth today that you just need to add some water to. Then adding in my organic minced beef, my red bell pepper and garlic, give that a little mix. And then I'm adding in the spices. This is some chili powder. I've also got some cumin and some paprika. Again, I will make sure to have the exact measurements, of everything below in the description box. Give that a little mix, and then I'm adding in my bouillon, my broth. Next, I'm adding in a can of chopped tomatoes, a little bit of tomato paste. Then I'm just gonna let all of that cook for a few minutes. I'm gonna cover it with a lid. And then after a little bit, I'm going to add in the beans. Again, cover that up and just let it simmer. I also love adding in some fresh spinach to dishes like this, just adds a little bit of extra green. So I'm just preparing that and putting it off to the side. Okay, so the chili is pretty much done. It is just simmering a little bit to allow all of the flavors to mesh together. I will be adding in some fresh spinach before I serve it, but other than that, it's pretty much done and it smells amazing. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to finish up our pumpkin bars. So taking the icing out of the fridge, I'm going to pour that onto our pumpkin bar filling, just spreading it out nice and evenly, and then I'm gonna pop that back into the fridge. And then a couple hours later, we were ready to have dinner, so I added in the fresh spinach and then just pressed that down into the chili and it wilts really nicely. And again, you just get that extra bit of green. And because this had been simmering and cooking together for a couple of hours, it was just so delicious. It smelled amazing. Just a really great kind of hearty, warming meal for the fall time. So just to top that off, I added some cilantro onto mine, some sliced avocado as well, and then just drizzled it with some 
some lime juice and this was delicious. And then after dinner, I was so excited to try the pumpkin bars. And at this point, I realized it could probably still stay in the fridge or even in the freezer for a little bit longer since the icing hadn't really set. But nonetheless, it was still delicious. We both really enjoyed it. But since then, I did put it back into the freezer and the consistency was really nice. It was kind of like a fudge meets a brownie, kind of like a pumpkin bread. So it was a pretty interesting recipe. I don't know if I would say it's my favorite, but something definitely fun to try. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found some good inspiration. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.